For log utility with log 4j, we are really not going to discuss a lot in our framework at least. Rather, we are going to see that as a crash course so that you can either take a choice of whether to go with log 4j or the code that we are going to develop within our framework with a custom logging mechanism. But as of now, as the log 4j is kind of very very famous, I'm going to create a new project and I will demonstrate to you how to work with the log 4j application and how to perform those operations. So as you can see that I'm directly putting in the project location of my own directory something like log example and then I'm going to hit OK. So I'm going to create this in a new window so that we don't mess up with our existing project. And this is as said before this is just the simple project so I'm just going to convert that with the maven so that we can add the dependency very easily. So I have added the maven and also I'm going to enable the auto import. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the references for the log4j. So you can just search for log4j maven dependency log4j2 I guess maven dependency and then you can just go for the log4j from the maven. And you can see this these are the two important libraries that we are require. So I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to get the latest version which is nothing but the 2.7 and I can add the reference and I'm going to paste it over here. But before that we need to also add the dependencies tag because we are going to add two or three uh, dependencies here. All right. So it is downloading the dependency for us and then there is one more dependency which is nothing but the log4j api so i'm going to also grab that and i'm going to paste it over here there we go so this too should be downloaded by now so currently it is resolving the dependencies hmm. it says the dependency is not found so what if i add the two point maybe sometime this happens it doesn't happen always but you can you can just see why is this happening sometimes it just goes crazy so I'm just gonna save it again and let's see okay so 2.6.2 .2 is working so why don't we just change this for API as well all right 2.6.2 .2 is working so there is not much greater change with between these libraries so I'm gonna go over here to the main folder and then I'm gonna start using the log4j and as the rule of thumb with log4j is it's very very straightforward and simple because all you're gonna do is you're gonna use some kind of loggers and some appenders and some kind of custom loggers you can do a lot of things with log4j because log4j2 is very bigger is used especially for a very big frameworks and it's very awesome as well but for an automation framework this much logging mechanism is not required and that's the reason I'm really not interested in this at least for our framework so what I'm going to do is I will quickly show you how to write a very simple code at least in this example and you can see that I'm writing this completely out of the framework so that I don't really merge this code right so the first thing as I already said for the logging with log4j we need to add a logger so as you can see I'm just right creating a, a variable for logger and you can see this logger is available in log4j here right this is an interface and I'm gonna create a logger is equal to you can see there is something called as log manager this class is very much responsible very much responsible for creating the logging for which particular class and you can see you can specify which class that you want to initialize this log manager so I'm gonna say log manager dot I'm gonna say get class get logger for which class and as you can see the class I'm going to create is going to be this class the main dot class so you can e either specify main dot class or you can also specify the fully qualified class name so main dot class is also fine or for the best practice you can also specify the fully qualified class name by also specifying the package so I'm going to save it very very straightforward this will end the creation of a logger you can just put this out of the main method so that you can call this within any of the methods within this particular class file and then you can see that within this logger variable you can actually see there are different kinds of options available like debug 
and there is some option for info, errors, and one, fatal, so many things. And these are very, very important because as I already said, this is used for a bigger frameworks. Logger.info. Let's create an information message saying, hey, I'm in the main method, something like this. And let's say if you have a method which is kind of failing, like login test, and let's say this method, if it is failing, then you can just call logger dot error and you can state that I got failed. Something like this. You can keep on adding the logging information here and you can also specify so many options. So why not just try to run this code and see how it's going to run. So I'm just going to right click and run this main method and let's see what is the output that we're going to get. And you can see that it is showing us a message saying uh, no log4j configuration file found using the default configurations and logging only error to the consoles. What does that mean? Basically log4j2 will have a different way of identifying what kind of logging mechanism or configuration it has to use for the logging mechanism. Basically, it uses the default configurations and the default configurations shows only the error message to the console. And since we are showing a info message and we are not even calling the logger error method, it is going to create us a problem. So what I'm going to do is I will just call the login test this time, save it. And now if I try to run this particular piece of code, you will see that I got failed message as well. There we go. You can see that I have a I got failed message and also you will see there is a timestamp main displayed in the square brackets and there is an error and you will get the error message from which class and this is the message and how is these things are actually generated it's very very simple just go over here and there is a log4j logging.apache.org log4j there's a manual for configuration and you will see some kind of example that we are discussing right here and the actual XML file that I was talking about, the default configuration XML file will actually look something like this. So this is the actual XML file which is being generated. So if I try to replicate the same somewhere right here, let's say if I want to add a XML file for this guy uh, with the name log4j2.xml, and I'm going to create it right here. So I'm just pasting the same code which I saw out there. And logger's name is going to be com.company. And the method, the class name is main. So I'm just going to save it. And right now, if I try to run this, you will see the same output. There will be no change, by the way. But this time, the message you will get is not from the default configuration. You can see that the red color warning message is gone. Rather, we are getting it something like this, right? And uh, let's quickly go over here and let's do something else differently. What if I don't want to show the log information with error? So if I go to the log4j here and Let's say I also want, I just want to show the error message, but not the trace information. Let's remove this. I'm going to save it over here and let's try to run this. You can see that I will only see the error message, but not the actual trace information, which is nothing but any information like info, debug, or one, something like that. So I will only see the error message, right? So this is how you can do a lot of control or the logging mechanism using the log4j using this super cool uh, configuration XML file. But if I want to add even more spices with this code, what I can basically do is I can export this code to an external data source, something like an external file.